carpet pythons. So the snake that is most notorious for being aggressive, mean, and just an all-around nasty animal. But with this animal, does this stereotype hold true, or is this just a classic case of people just misunderstanding the species? Well, we're going to find that out and more as we talk all about my jungle carpet python and kind of the behavior I've noticed around owning her for over a year now. Let's sit back, relax, and dive into the carpet python. Now I fell in love with the Morelli species quite a few years ago, and to be honest, my, you know, my opinion, I really think they are the most beautiful species of snakes. Um, however, due to those years of me being, you know, fairly inexperienced, I've always was a little weary of getting the carpet python just because of the stigma of the, really their attitude. Getting more experience with other reptiles and things that are a little more intermediate and advanced, I then at this point felt I was comfortable enough to, you know, even take on something that is a little harder to tame down or something that I could even just work around with with any uh, behavioral issues. With that said, after owning this carpet python for pretty much a year now, I've come to the realization that they aren't an aggressive snake. Uh, this isn't a snake. I, you know, when everyone says aggressive, I really mean, I think that word has just been so misused, especially around in the hobby. Um, this isn't an aggressive animal. You're not going to open the cage and the snake's not going to come lunging out at you. That's, that's not how it works. I don't think there really is any reptile that just is going to, you know, you open the cage and go across the room and he's going to go across the room and attack you. That's not how it works, people. No, from my personal experience, I have found that these guys are not an aggressive snake in any way of the sorts. Uh, defensive, maybe territorial, for sure. Those could be words that are much better used than, say, the word aggressive. Or those two traits are really just a roadblock when you're dealing with something like a carpet python. Uh, with proper tools and handling uh, techniques, I can get this guy out, or this gal out, excuse me, and um, handle her without any issues or any fear of getting bit whatsoever. So I'm going to show you just that uh, in a minute. We're going to get out of this chair up into her enclosure, which is right behind me, and take her out. And I'm going to show you she really is in no way an aggressive animal. Uh, maybe a little bit defensive, but you also have to remember that she is in her juvenile stages. And really the psychology of around snakes and how, I mean, if you put it into her perspective, I mean, you are a very large primate um, going in to grab her. So of course, you know, this animal is going to be a little bit more alert and not just like, oh yeah, you know, here, just go ahead and grab me. <laughs> With that all being said, let's go check her out. I got to figure out how to position the camera so you can get a good shot of her. And then, you know, we'll just talk about her a little bit. I don't know. I like handling the jungle. Well, there you have it. Uh, not that bad, not hard. Uh, she didn't, you know, she wasn't lunging out at me, trying to bite me, uh, going after me, nothing like that. If anything, she was just trying to get away from the hook. Uh, I find just using a snake hook itself is really the easiest way to get him out. Of course, you don't need to. I know there's a couple of carpet python breeders that just, you know, just go in and grab them. I just find the hook a little easier and, you know, just kind of a wimp, I guess. <laughs> For pythons, it is going to be a little different than handling, say, your standard BCI or, um, you know, ball pythons, corn snakes, things like that. Going to be a little bit more of a touchy snake where you kind of have to have, you know, a little finesse when handling them. <laughs> This isn't going to be a snake that you're going to want to just grab and pick up. I really like to do just nice fluid motions, making sure she has leverage while using both of my hands, but not do any forcible grabbing. Uh, anytime you provide, you know, any pressure or, or grip or even just bumper like I just did, she does freak out a little bit and start uh, moving around. But as you can see, just with the fluid motions that I'm doing, I'll say fluid one more time, <laughs> um, she is just in no fear and she's just exploring around and, you know, having a good time. Oh, check out that camera, huh? Can I zoom in on your face? It's not gonna let me? All right. Well, there's a camera. <laughs> what did we learn today? Well, jungle carpets and carpet pythons in general are not an aggressive animal. Just an animal that's a little more defensive and something that you need to take a little more care of when you're attempting to handle, but definitely not something, like I'll say again, that's gonna lash out at you, you know, seek you out and try to hunt you down. No, this little, you know, 
two, three foot snake is not gonna do that to me. <laughs> Honestly, I can't recommend these guys enough for someone that's wanting to, you know, take that uh, extra step of a challenge, you know, something that's not gonna be just as easy as a ball python where you just take them out of the enclosure, but something that gets like, a little bit more of a challenge, I guess I would say. These guys are just incredible. I've never had a snake species that are more, I wanna say like aware than the jungle carpet python is. Uh, this gal is always looking at me, you know, trying to figure me out, and I don't know, just in my opinion, they seem like a more intelligent animal than your standard like colubrid or python. Oh, are you gonna go up the, up the camera? Oh, that's a good thumbnail. <laughs> this snake has just been amazing, and I really have nothing but good things to say about her. I, like I said, this is probably my favorite snake that I own here at DVCV Exotics. She is just incredible. I'm hoping to eventually breed her and start my own line of jungle carpets. I don't have a male as of yet, just because the female is, you know, going to take her time to grow. She is a 2018 baby. Uh, I was, you know, hoping to breed her in 2021 because she would have been, she would be three and a half years. So, sorry, she'd be three and a half years at that point. But it does look like with her current size, that might need to be stretched to 2022, and I'll wait till she's over four years. Uh, it just kind of is what it is with carpet pythons. I always feel like when you get into species like this, it's a lot better to um, wait longer or than, than, you know, try to risk it and go sooner. Uh, these guys just, you know, I think, I feel like they're worth it. You know, I think the jungle carpet's worth it, you know, to wait the four years out. Get her really hunt down a nice highlighter yellow male and makes, produce some, you know, beautiful babies. These are actually some of the guys that I've really been wanting to breed for quite a while. I mean, come on, I have it. It's my logo is the jungle carpet python. It's actually this exact jungle carpet python uh, per se. And really, the reason why I haven't really, you know, started you know, breeding these guys is, well, one, um, she's not old enough. Like I said, she should, she might be a 2022 baby. We'll, we'll see how it goes, but I'm predicting that I won't breed her next year and it'll be a two-year project. Um, the, two, the project will be out for two years then, and just because I'd, I'd like to play it more safe with these guys, but I am just, I'm in love with the Morelia species. I, I love carpet pythons, and I'm especially interested in the morphs, which really brings me to my second reason why I'm not breeding these guys. Morphs are pretty pricey. Of course, as I've started getting into my years of breeding, I've, my price of, you know, expensive animals has gone up going from when I wasn't breeding, you know, my most expensive animals, like $250 to now I buy animals that are five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars However, these, ooh, you know, she just, she like pops, she boops her head on my hand and then freaks out. I, I don't know, man, like you did it to yourself. What are you doing? <laughs> With most of the jungle carpet morphs, you can expect anywhere from a 12 to around $2,500 price tag for them. And that is just for babies, which then I would need to spend another, you know, three, four years in order to grow them up. So, although I know I really do enjoy jungle carpets and they will be a big part of DBCB Exotics in the future, just right now, I unfortunately don't have the money to spend on them. Yeah, all in all, I mean, just look at this girl. She is incredible. I was gonna zoom in, but then she wrapped her tail around my fingers, so no zoom in, unfortunately. I can't focus in, and my hands are tied. <laughs> This girl is just incredible and I cannot wait for the future when I can finally get my hand on some of these amazing morphs and pro be actually producing these guys. I mean, that's kind of like, that's one of the, you know, those dream bucket lists of mine as a breeder is to be able to produce my own clutch of jungle carpet pythons. Well, I think that's gonna wrap it up, guys. You know, we talked about how these really aren't an aggressive snake, uh, how much I love the Morelia species, and kind of my plans for breeding them. You, you booped yourself with your own tail, man. Carpet pythons. <laughs> I guess we're gonna wrap it up and put her back in, you know. I don't want to get her too stressed out with the constant handling, but I think, you know, I think we're gonna say goodbye. Let's see if I can uh, get a good shot of her. Let's... Whoa, whoa. There you go. Check out that beautiful head, man. There's nothing I love more than her head stamp. It looks like a little guy. That is, uh, I'll be honest, that is the main reason why I, uh, I bought this girl specifically was because because of the head stamp. <laughs> Alrighty, what do you say? Let's go back into your enclosure? All right.
right, now that should wrap up the video, however, I think it's still gonna be a little short, so, um, I don't know. You guys wanna see a rare snake? Now this, now this is a Savu Python. Um, fortunately, she is in a deep shed right now, so I won't be able to, I won't, you won't be able to see, you know, like her true colors. She really has this beautiful uh, iridescent to her, almost like, I kinda compare them almost to like a relative of the white-lipped python, but instead of having the white lips, she just has a, one of these like ice blue, you know, white eyes that again, unfortunately can't see because she's shedding. This Savu Python happens to belong to my wife. She got him almost decades ago. I believe uh, the snake is going on about 14 to 17 years old. It is a old gal, and I'm really hoping towards the line. Oh, where are you going? Oh, you are up and around, aren't you? Look at you. Now this is another species that I've really grown a crazy passion for. I had no idea what a Savu Python even was until I met Renee. And then when she showed me, I have just gained such a fascination for this species. It really got to the point for about a year and a half or so, I was searching for a, a mate for her. I really wanted to produce these guys when I started DBCB Exotics and having just my own clutch of Savu Pythons, I think it's not only really important so we can kind of keep getting, you know, a captive bloodline going for these guys, but also it would just be amazing to get. Savu pythons are just an amazing snake. When they first hatch out, they're this brilliant orangey red color, almost like, a, I would say, like an auburn or an autumn color. I don't really know colors, but they're just this brilliant, bright color. And then over time, it just fade into this almost, I don't really know what they call, you know, a purple brown maybe, but they still retain this brilliant iridescence. And of course, it breaks up into a white pattern towards the belly. All in all, they're just an incredible snake. I'm gonna try to get some B-roll of this uh, gal's eyes when she is done shedding fully. Uh, however, my one issue is, I, well, geez. <laughs> now the Tegu wants out. I. This is DBZB Exotics, folks. It's just, it's chaos all around. <laughs> this time, I actually have been able to find a breeder for this for this gal, but the one issue is, I'm not 100% that she is female. Of course, boy or girl, this snake is pushing an old age, and so time is a little bit of the essence where if we want to get some fertile clutches going from her before, you know, she becomes just a little too old in order to breed. Hoping that sometime this year, I'll actually get around to sexing this girl. I know, just pop her, just probe her, eh, you know. It, it is what <laughs> I finally get the time where I'll properly sex her and then seek out a male for it and seek out either a male or a female depending on what she or he is. Um, I'm really hoping to get it done so then hopefully we can get a either a sub adult or hopefully an adult. Uh, not a hundred percent sure but hopefully we can get some mate where we either have to grow out for a little bit or not at all and we can finally attempt breeding these guys because some stuff that I've had heard about them is the breeding for them is slightly difficult. Alrighty, we're gonna wrap it up here as this girl just wraps me up. <laughs> Come on, let's get you back in your setup so I can uh, get that outro done. All right, guys, and that's gonna wrap it up for today. You know, let me know if you like this, you know, where I'm kind of doing two things at the same time. I'm trying to keep uh, my average watch duration up a little higher, and I feel like instead of making these long, drawn-out, you know, 10 to 15-minute videos, I kind of switched up where it's just a little bit of a segment here and a little bit of a segment there. I've noticed that the watch times are going down a little bit, so if you made it this far, leave me a comment. How do you guys like it? Is this something you want to see more of in the future where I just kind of have a main talking point, but I have a little side routes and talk about some other stuff in between? Then other than that, if you like the video, please feel free to give us a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of my animals or my breeding products, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at DBCB Exotics. Other than that, of course, we have the Herp Hour. The Herp Hour is a podcast that I do with myself and Professor Herp. We stream every day, every week at Twitch on Saturdays at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Definitely give us a check out. A, a check out? That, check it out. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day.